аспект. Ніхто не має права шантажувати світ радіаційною катастрофою. Це аксіома. We know that the Soviets built small what they call atomic demolition munitions. Хочу напомнить, что наша страна также располагает различными средствами поражения, а по отдельным компонентам и более современным, чем у стран НАТО. И при угрозе территориальной целостности нашей страны для защиты России и нашего народа мы безусловно используем все имеющиеся в нашем распоряжении средства. Это не блеск. Vladimir Putin has often warned that he will use all means at Russia's disposal amid the ongoing war with Ukraine. While the world has already witnessed the devastating impact of Putin's missiles, could there be a secret weapon in Russia's arsenal that has never been officially acknowledged? A suitcase nuke is a tactical nuclear weapon which uses or is portable enough to use a suitcase as its delivery method. While the devastation caused by a suitcase nuke would be limited compared to a conventional nuclear device, its value lies in the ease with which it can be smuggled across borders. The difference with this kind of a device is you don't put it on the tip of a missile. You sneak it in and it can be camouflaged as a rock, it can be carried as a suitcase or it could be a small as the briefcase I have here. The controversy around Russia's suitcase nukes erupted in 1997. The man who triggered it was former Secretary of the Russian Security Council, Alexander Lebed. In a closed-door meeting with the US congressional delegation in May 1997, Lebed claimed he believed that a large number of Russian bombs were missing more than 84, in fact, of the one kiloton bombs manufactured during the Cold War. It was May of 97. We sat in Lebed's office and I said, General, tell us about your military. He said, Congressman Weldon, our country's in military's in total disarray. Then he went on and he said, let me give you an example. When I was at Yeltsin's side, he tasked me to account for all of these small atomic munitions that we had produced. He said, I knew the figure was 132. And he said, we knew that was the number that we had to account for. He said, as Yeltsin's personal advisor, we searched all of our Ministry of Atomic Energy facilities, all of our military bases, all of our strategic forces command. And I could only find uh, something like 50, which meant that there were 80 unaccounted for. Lebed repeated his claims in an interview with the CBS News magazine 60 Minutes, broadcast on the 7th of September 1997. Only this time, he said he believed the figure was over a hundred. Lebed said, and I quote, I am saying that more than a hundred weapons out of the supposed number of 250 are not under the control of the armed forces of Russia. I don't know their location. I don't know whether they've been destroyed or whether they are stored or whether they've been sold or stolen. Unquote. Lebed claimed these devices were made to look like suitcases and could be detonated by one person within half an hour. He added that the bombs, measuring 16 to 14 to 20 centimeters, had been distributed among special Soviet military intelligence units belonging to the GRU. Lebed's claims were later backed by Alexei Yablokov, former environmental advisor to President Yeltsin. Yablokov stated that he personally met a person who produced suitcase-sized nuclear devices in the 1970s under orders from the KGB specifically for terrorist purposes. I met one people who told me several years ago, yes, do, uh, do you know that uh, exists such, su such a small size of nuclear weapons like suitcase? I was surprised and uh, uh, cannot believe, uh, but he told me. I made it. Such a, such a strange situation. Oh, oh, at, the, at the end of the story, I am absolutely sure that it, it has been made, but I don't sure that it exists just now. Such a situation. He further added that they may not have been taken into account in the Soviet general nuclear arsenal and may not be under the control of the Russian Defense Ministry. 
another top former Russian official who confirmed the presence of suitcase nukes, was former Soviet colonel and GRU operative Stanislav Lunev. Lunev said, and I quote, these devices, identified as RA-115s, weigh from 50 to 60 pounds. They can last for many years if wired to an electric source. In case there is a loss of power, there is a battery backup. If the battery runs low, the weapon has a transmitter that sends a coded message, either by satellite or directly to a GRU post at a Russian embassy or consulate, unquote. However, the former Soviet official who defected to the US in 1992 added another sensational angle to the suitcase nukes mystery. He claimed that the small, man-portable nuclear devices may have already been pre-positioned in NATO countries, including the United States, during the Cold War. Lunev added that the number of missing nuclear devices is almost identical to the number of strategic targets upon which the bombs would be used. Moscow issued denial after denial, terming the reports of uncontrolled nuclear suitcases absolutely groundless. Georgi Korov, spokesman for the Ministry of Atomic Energy, said that smaller nuclear weapons were technically feasible but reiterated that all Russian nuclear warheads were under strict control. Lieutenant General Igor Valinkin, the head of the 12th Main Directorate, the department responsible for the storage and security of nuclear weapons, also gave an assurance about the safety of the Russian nuclear arsenal. Valinkin said that all tactical nuclear weapons were removed from the arsenals of individual military units in the early 1990s and transferred to special storage sites under the control of the 12th Directorate. On suitcase nukes, Valinkin said that while it is technically possible to build such low-yield warheads, he denied that the USSR or Russia had ever manufactured such weapons. He added that such a small nuclear weapon would be too expensive to be practical, since its nuclear core would need to be recharged every three months in order to retain its effectiveness. Interestingly, the United States' official response seemed in sync with the Russian government's assertion. James Foley of the US State Department said, and I quote, The government of Russia has assured us that it retains adequate command and control of its nuclear arsenal and that appropriate physical security arrangements exist for these weapons and facilities. We have been assured by the Russian authorities that there is no cause for concern. We believe the assurances we have received, unquote. However, former Republican member of the U.S. House of Representatives, Kurt Weldon, claims the then-Russian defense minister had admitted that Moscow had in fact built these devices. I had a face-to-face -face meeting with the Russian defense minister. In his office in Moscow, his name was Marshal Sergeyev. I said, then you have to help me. I need to know the truth. Lebed told me last May that he couldn't account for any devices. Your public, your foreign ministry has said you never built these devices. So, General Sergeyev, I need to know the truth. Did you build them or not? In December of that year, Marshal Sergeyev looked me in the eye and said, Yes, Congressman, we did build these devices. The lightest nuclear warhead ever acknowledged to have been manufactured by the US is the W-54 which was used in both the Davy Crockett 120mm recoilless rifle-launched warhead and the backpack version, called the MS-54 Special Atomic Demolition Munition. The bare warhead package was a 28cm by 41cm cylinder that weighed 23 kilos. It was, however, small enough to fit in a footlocker-sized container. A report in nonproliferation.org says that the W-54 warhead was developed between 1960 to 1963 and its initial deployment began in 1964. The report says that the Special Atomic Demolition Munitions were deployed by the US and the Army Marine Corps Commando units were trained to use them. Special forces of several US allies including Germany, Britain and the Netherlands were also reportedly trained in their use. Some reports say that even Israel has produced nuclear warheads small enough to fit into a suitcase. Analysts say the fact that the US built these devices during the Cold War era suggests the Soviet Union may have produced them as well. In 1995, several Russian media reports claimed that Chechen separatists had obtained such weapons. Some reports describe the purchase of two 30-kilo rucksack nukes by Chechen representatives in Lithuania between November 1991 and January 1992. 
However, Lebed himself had referred to an investigation which found these allegations to be untrue. Fears were also raised about the Al-Qaeda being in possession of the briefcase bombs. Ayman al-Zawahiri, Osama bin Laden's successor and former Al-Qaeda chief, reportedly told Pakistani journalist Hamid Mir, and I quote, Mr. Mir, if you have $30 million, go to the black market in Central Asia, contact any disgruntled Soviet scientist, and a lot of smart briefcase bombs are available. They have contacted us. We've sent our people to Moscow, to Tashkent, to other Central Asian states, and they negotiated and we purchased some suitcase bombs." Unquote. In 2001, General Igor Velinkin, the head of the 12th Main Department of the Russian Defense Ministry, told reporters that two attempts were made by unnamed terrorists to penetrate Russian nuclear storage facilities known as S-shelters. While he claimed the attempts were repelled, the location of S-shelters is top secret and the fact that some hostile outsiders had discovered these facilities is in itself alarming. If Russia does indeed still possess suitcase nukes built during the Soviet era, the possibility exists that Putin could deploy them to seal victory in the Ukraine war. The suitcase nukes may be handed to Russian troops who could take them to the battlefield closer to the front line. They could also be used to target important objects, military or economic infrastructure, by sabotage and reconnaissance groups of special forces. While a one kiloton nuclear strike may not affect the whole of Ukraine, it can make a city uninhabitable for years if deployed and deliver a message to both Ukraine and its Western backers. If Russia can, continues to lose the war, which I suspect they will, then Putin will eventually face a choice between accepting that loss and escalating to the nuclear level. And I think he might be very tempted to escalate to the nuclear level at that point. This is a war that both sides appear determined to win at all costs. Could that cost involve the use of a secret weapon? Will Ukraine be the first known victim of a Russian suitcase nuclear device?